I've always found comedy to be one of the great humanistic arts. It honors humanity from its ability to alter what were once the traumas of life into tales perhaps ironic and preposterous, yet ones that offer a common bond within each of us. And anyone with the capability to communicate a laugh through cinema, I will always hold a deep admiration for. Because not only is the artist juggling ridiculousness with sympathy to manifest comedy, but is doing so while simultaneously constructing a film narrative. It's one of the most difficult things I could conceive of. Jokes should never have to be explained, but the aim of comedy in cinema is to lead a subject through the most farcical circumstances, all the while maintaining the faintest degree of comprehension from the viewer. In short, make us recognise something and laugh because of it. Comedy is worthless unless the audience understands the irony. Whether we ourselves have been through it, or are able to make a comparison with the way the subject in question experiences it. This is why I believe comedy to be a cornerstone of humanism, because it's the pinnacle of human solidarity. To laugh at one's own situation is to dwindle one's own ego. It's the single moment in which we're able to gain perspective at the pettiness of our woes. But if the essence of comedy is about being relatable, then why can the cruelty of a joke be limitless and still be funny? What is it about bleakness and suffering that makes us laugh? Because with a plethora of comedies to his name, it's a fascination with the humour of being pathetic, which is the staple of Aki Karazmaki. Wooden characters in grim situations is the Karazmaki definition of comedic, but contrast to what we would believe, it's this morbidity of his humour which allows his movies to not only be about cynicism and despair, though they are, but show that they are more films about hopeful possibilities, as it's in that brief glimmer of hope in the miserable where Karazmaki finds a humorous harmony with his subjects. He hopes for cinema to offer a more realist approach to humanism, but though they appear cold, there's a warmth within a charismatic film that navigates its way through the bitterness and misanthropy, finding its way to tenderness. And it's in this deep-seated warmth that allows us to cautiously and uncomfortably laugh at the work of Aki Karazmaki. Cinema ha doesn't have such influence to, to force the three people who go to see this film that uh, we are all same, we are all human, and tomorrow it will be you who will be a refugee. Today it's him or her. The first step in charismatic and comedy is that humour must be found in everything, be it absurd, or horrific. Anything has the potential to be humorous. Using comedy in this manner is the method in which Karazmaki is able to take distressing situations but use laughter to soften the blow. This is fundamental to Karazmaki's approach. Certain brands of cinema are known for romanticizing emotion, but the humor of Karazmaki comes from the fact that when dealing with drama, he acts as though there is none. Rather than highlighting the emotion, Karazmaki chooses to taper it down, and instead of replacing it with something else, doesn't replace it at all. The subjects of Karazmaki are pragmatists without complexities, thus when confronted with conflict, they act accordingly, not at all. The results are scenes with chasms of empty subtext, creating a degree of boredom for our characters that can only be described as laughable because to show no nuance of emotion in something that should be full of emotion is comedic in itself. Go back to the bar and cancel the order. A wonderful idea. You're so wise, Margaret. The viewer of a Karazumaki film becomes accustomed to viewing everything as a joke, thus it becomes impossible for any kind of melodrama to emerge, even at a movie's most serious moments. Instead of viewing everything through a humorless lens, the levity of laughter is how Karazmaki gives us the ability to confront the cruelty of life with a shrug before moving along. Being able to laugh at any event in this fashion diminishes its seriousness, and we become able to look at it with a slight pleasure. Karazmaki utilizes comedy as a tool to not merely make us laugh, but to show that there is no subject too serious that it can't be mocked. But if everything has humorous potential, then how does Karazmaki inject that humour? The second step of a Karazmaki comedy is that no matter the circumstances, everything must go wrong. Karazmaki's work is characterised by stories of defeat, yet where other artists would show the decline of a character's well-being from before things went wrong, Karazmaki opts to introduce characters at their lowest, whether it's being fired from their jobs or immersed in an event that distorts their world completely. Fortune has never favoured these people. 
And this is the foundation of Karuzmaki's loser character. Their world is hopeless. They begin at their absolute worst and just keep getting lower. Comedy is about shattering expectations, building anticipation for something only to go as far as possible in the opposite direction. For Karuzmaki, this means lifeless characters aiming for success only for a catastrophic failure to greet them. It may be dark, but the tenets of comedy are still there. Subjects expect one thing, but get the complete adverse. Karuzmaki's cause for comedy is rooted in the hardships of his characters, although the notion that the suffering they endure lessens their worth is completely opposed by him. Karuzmaki insisted that innocence is the essence of cinema, thus innocence is what he strives for. The way Karuzmaki accomplishes this is through the method of finding comedy within failure. Karuzmaki's formula is to confront his characters with a multitude of trials, not because those trials are important, but because the ability for a character to progress through them is what earns them their right of innocence. No matter how many failures a subject encounters, their capacity to persevere with the hope that things get better is naive. They continue even though they know the sole reason they exist is for things to go wrong. But the strength of their will is how Karuzmaki displays belief in a cynical world. This is Karuzmaki's proposition, that we must appreciate a person's failures as much as their successes, as no matter how many times a person has seen defeat, if they endure, their resolve brings an optimism in this world of pessimists. Therefore, Karuzmaki ensures that anything that can go wrong for a character will. As the comedy comes not from the failure itself, we laugh at the fickle nature of life and its unyielding efficiency to make our only purpose of survival so difficult. But beyond the propensity for failure, it's this notion of survival which is why Karuzmaki's style of humour is so successful. It's not simply because these bad things happen, it's because these events occur to the people who are just trying to survive. To be Karuzmakian is to have terrible events happen to those who want nothing more than to be left alone. I wouldn't call it a, a proletarian trilogy, it's a, it's a loser trilogy. Same story as always. Just the location and the nationality of the characters has changed. Nothing else, I hope. The traits of a Karuzmaki loser will include expressionless faces and a deadpan delivery, even as their world crumbles around them. The etiquette of a Karuzmaki world revolves around stern formalities. Dialogue is orderly and correct, with no discernible characteristics whatsoever. Karuzmaki is even known to tell actors to deliver their lines without passion, and he's even had actors learn lines phonetically in another language to give it an abnormally bland cadence. People here like healthy looking bands like the Beats Boys. People talk too much anyway. So I never write more than one, one page scenes anymore. And anyway, I'm talking is nonsense. There's no sense for that. No reason. Karuzmaki uses only the bare necessities in his scripts, as it allows for a greater comedic contrast of his character's dire circumstances to their total absence of concern. But this notion of nothing being wasted is not solely restricted to Karuzmaki's use of dialogue, it's intrinsic to the methodology of Karuzmaki. Everything in his movies are stripped down of any excess, from character dialogue to camera movement to composition, Karuzmaki shows us nothing more than is necessary because it's a reflection of his characters. The luxury of comfort doesn't exist in their worlds because their concerns lie only in that which is needed to survive. Sure. From the food eaten to the clothes worn to the roads that are traveled, every image in a Karuzmaki film is constructed as an obligation to the minimalistic. There lies no extravagance in these images. They're formulated in a world interested in surviving and nothing more. The result is a cinematic symphony which celebrates ugliness in all facets of life. In a Karuzmaki movie, the unseemly is neglected. Rooms are harshly lit, vehicles are beyond repairing, and the slicked hair and bad makeup of his subjects can only be described as odd. Yet characters almost wear their lack of attraction as a badge of honour, because the ugliness echoes people that are simply far too busy for drama. They don't care. The harsh colours and set designs are less to do with aesthetics, they're ways of being. They mirror simple characters who are looking for a way to live an ordinary life deprived of any kind of excitement. Karuzmaki is a director whose technique coexists with the world he creates. His characters deal in mundanities, and so his approach too deals in the mundane. By creating stories revolving around the confinement of people's lives, his cinematography becomes emblematic of this. Karuzmaki evokes a flat style of cinematography because that's exactly what these people's lives are. Flat, uninteresting. And like every other element in a Karuzmaki movie, in his compositions, nothing is wasted. We see only the material spaces inhabited in these worlds, as though nothing exists outside of what we see. 
establishing shots and tonal imagery are instead favoured by stringent and immobile direction. Karizmaki almost never moves the camera. Everything is static, nothing to attract the eye. Even objects in the frame appearing as lifeless as the subject. Yet what Karizmaki often likes to do is to focus on single items in the frame in a very stark and unashamed fashion. These simple moments appear far more exemplified than they actually are. Truthfully, there is nothing extraordinary about them, they just contrast the dull backdrop in which they appear. This is Karizmaki showing that amidst misery, happiness can still be found. Karizmaki is a director known for mocking the glamorized sentimentality of cinema. To him, happiness is not the grand victory of people's lives, it's those subtle moments of promise we see all the time. Because for Karizmaki, life is ugly, it's cruel, it's harsh. But just because life is ugly, doesn't mean that beauty can't be found within it. Karizmaki foregoes the romantic lies that cinema can tell for a sense of realism which becomes far more empathic because it's true. Tattered buildings display the loss encompassing these characters, but those brief moments of beauty we see are all the more brighter for it. This coldness that Karizmaki creates is only there so that it may provide a later warmth. In a Karizmaki film, humour is earned through grief. Not the idea of sadness itself, but the irony that people can survive in a world this ruthless. But Karizmaki shows that although everything may go wrong, the ability to laugh at our shortcomings is what gives us strength. Because this humorous solidarity can only be found in failure, through the Karizmakian charm of taking the awful and turning it into a joke. But Karizmaki's realist approach to humanism allows him to find hope in unhappiness and laughter in sorrow. The world may be cold and inhospitable, but in the work of Aki Karazmaki, this simply means that the happiness we find will resonate far greater for it. Oh, when I shake your shoulders and I move your feet, now I gotta run to the